wait, wait, why? Why is he so good? This is not supposed to be <laughs> whatever, dude. All right, let's get into it, guys. All right, guys, I'm not going to waste any of your time. We are getting into the best summons in Elden Ring after patch 1.08, and these summons are phenomenal. I know a lot of people don't want to use summons. This video is not for you. This video is for people like me that love the crutch of a summon to help them out, love the lore of the summons, all of that. We are going to be using some solid summons in this particular video, so strap up. It's about to get gnarly. I have six to seven summons here for you that I think are s and a tier summons that you should definitely be using in your gameplay i am filming all of this in new game plus five so keep that in mind when you see the summons battling against ads and bosses i've done rigorous tests trying to figure out which summons are the best and i think i have found it so without further ado let's get into it the first summon we're going to be looking at is Ancient Dragon Knight, Kristoff at plus 10. This Ashes is phenomenal. He has so many different attacks. He has a great toolkit when it comes to fighting bosses and when it comes to fighting adds. He has a lightning imbued weapon. He has lightning spells. He has a giant shield. Long story short, he is a tank. If you are looking for somebody to keep you safe when you're playing, if you are looking for somebody to keep and maintain aggro for you while you are casting, or you're running a more squishy glass cannon build, this is going to be the summon for you. I have been using this guy for the better part of four to five hours, and I rarely get hit. Depending on who I'm fighting, this guy can typically maintain aggro, cast lightning down from the sky, use a giant explosion of force out to knock adds down to clear space. He does the job amazingly, and he's just really, really good overall. I think this is a solid S tier summon. He does what you need him to do. He holds the aggro against the bosses. He does a really decent amount of damage, and he sticks around for a while. Some summons you put out, and they don't do a whole lot for you, and they end up just getting in the way. Not in this case. Ancient Dragonite Kristoff is a phenomenal summon. Definitely top of the list for me. The next summon we're going to look at on our list is the Great Shield Soldier Ashes at plus 10. Now, these guys are my favorite summon. I'm going to go ahead and say it. They are my absolute favorite summon. They hold aggro like it is their job. With this particular summon, you are going to get five Great Shield Soldiers that are going to spawn in front of you, and they are going to use their shields to smash into the enemies. They're going to use a roar to pull aggro at all times. And they're also going to use a ranged attack, which is some sort of a white flame jar attack that they throw, and it does a decent amount of damage. I find that these can be a little bit situational, though, depending on who you are fighting. If you are doing a one-on-one -on -one fight with a boss, they are absolutely top tier. But if you are fighting something or a boss that has an area of effect, all of these guys are going to take damage at one time, making them a little bit weaker. But other than that, they are phenomenal. They are great paired up with casters, especially if you need somebody to hold aggro for you. These guys are the tanks of tanks. I really enjoy them. They've done a great job of allowing me to get through as far as I have in New Game Plus 5, and they're super fun to use. I just think it's a great tactic to sit behind them as they're forming a wall in front of you, and you can just cast freely while they hold all of the aggro. I absolutely love them. Definitely a top-tier summon. The next summon on our list is going to be the most overpowered summon in my personal opinion because, well, it's you, the Mimic tier. This is an amazing summon because it is 100% you. Every single talisman you have on, every single piece of armor, every weapon you have, every spell you have, also, your Mimic tier is also going to have. So, this summon is just like you getting another you and trashing the entire game. It is super fun. I like to make my Mimic tier as overpowered as humanly possible. Right now, he has a spear, but he also has access, if I summon him again, to the Moon Veil, which, if you know anything about the Moon Veil Katana, it is absolutely broken when you're using an intelligence build of any kind. So, he's great against bosses. He's absolutely phenomenal against adds. He's super, super tanky. He can hold his own. Everything about this Mimic tier is really 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 good i would love to sit here and tell you that this mimic tier has weakness but in my opinion the only weakness is you however strong you want to make your mimic tier or however strong your current build is your mimic tier is going to reflect that i have sat here and watched mimic tier destroy bosses without even touching them personally so you can put your mimic tier out he will fight an entire boss fight for you depending on what the boss is and he will absolutely annihilate it. I definitely recommend this if you do not have it. 
you definitely need to snag it. It is going to make your gameplay a ton easier, especially if you are using summons. And next up, we have one of the biggest surprises on the list, in my opinion, is the Black Flame Monk Ammon. Now, this guy has Tekken-style combos. He is constantly hitting people with spells and with his sword. His sword does a really good amount of damage. His spells do phenomenal, amazing damage over time. He uses Black Flame spells, and he has a huge arsenal of them. I believe if I counted correctly, he has three different spells, all of which, if they hit your target, are going to give you a great damage over time burn, which is going to help you kill enemies faster. He is not as strong as, say, the Mimic tier or a Banished Knight summon, but he is going to be a perfect support for you. I find that if you are in the fray with this summon, you both are going to last longer than if you just let him do all the fighting. He does have really good damage, he has great combos, and he is a really good asset if you're using both casting spells and if you want to be in the fray with, say, a katana or a two-handed sword. As far as going up against really, really beefy enemies, he does a decent job. I say this would bring him down to about an A-tier summon because once you get into the really hard-hitting enemies, especially if you're fighting an enemy that has damage resistance like this Pumpkinhead does, he's not going to do as much damage until he gets his spells off. So that's something to take into account if you're going to be using this summon. So real quick, guys, if you guys are still here, go ahead and leave your favorite summon down in the comments. I really want to read through all these, see if I'm missing any, and I would really love to see what's some of your points of view are when it comes to the different summons that we are using. Also, if you leave a like on the video, that would be greatly appreciated. So let's get back into it with our next summon. And the next summon we have here on our list is Banished Knight Oleg at plus 10. This summon is one of my favorites. He has fantastic combos. He has a lot of damage. He has great damage mitigation, and he stays alive for a very, very long time. I've tried him on many different enemies and many different bosses, and he seems to do well all around. This is a solid, solid S-tier summon in my personal opinion, especially if you need somebody to keep aggro for you, and also be really, really aggressive with the damage. I've sat back and watched this summon defeat bosses on his own without me even getting involved, much like the Mimic tier. Obviously, he's not going to be as good as the Mimic tier, but he does incredible when it comes to your damage and damage mitigation when you're trying to work your way through this game. If he does have one weakness, it's the fact that during during the end of this game, you're going to find a lot of bosses that hit really, really, really hard. And I think the only viable option against those bosses is something like the Mimic Tier or the Black Knife Tish. But for every other boss in this game, whether it's in a dungeon or one of the minor bosses in the game, this summon is going to do just fine. And speaking of the Black Knife Tish, this list would not be complete without at least mentioning this absolutely crazy good summon. The Black Knife Tish used to be the end-all, be-all summon, the best summon in the entire game. I still think this summon is an S-tier summon just because of the skills that it has and the evasiveness that it uses when it dodges in and out to do its attacks. I think this is a really, really quality summon. It has a Black Flame Blade debuff that you can put onto the enemy, and once that happens, the enemy's health will be reduced by 10% and then slowly start ticking down as well with damage over time. When this game first came out, you could use her to kill bosses entirely no matter which boss it was in the game, this summon would absolutely annihilate them, but because of a few nerfs that have happened over the last few patches, the Black Knife Tish is still really good, but you have to do some of the legwork as well now instead of just sitting there and watching her take everything out. She does have one very small weakness, and that is if they can hit her, she takes a lot of damage very quickly. She is built to be very nimble, to be an assassin, to get in, get out, do those strikes really quickly, really do a lot of damage to the boss, but in turn, if she gets hit maybe five to six times, she is gone and she is done for. So keep that in mind when you're using the Black Knife Tish. Definitely a solid summon, still an S-tier summon, but not as good as she used to be. And our very last summon that we are going to have on the list is a little bit of an interesting one, so let me explain a little bit before you say a bunch of craziness in the comments. Latena the Albanaric. Now, this summon at base value does not look very great. I have her at plus 10, and she doesn't move. You put her down on the ground, and she's there. But the amount of damage that she can pour out over time is really awesome, and... She is a great support summon. This is a perfect summon if you're using a build, like a strength build, a dex build, maybe a faith build, anything where you're going to be in the fray with the enemy where you can just leave her somewhere in range and she will pepper your boss or pepper the enemy with three arrows at a time constantly until that enemy is gone. I really like using her because you have to use a little bit of strategy when placing her. Once you place her down, that's where she's going to be. But if you place her down in a place where she can see the boss well the entire time you're fighting, then she's going to be a perfect summon to support you 
and she's also going to do a really good amount of damage. With that being said, though, you have to protect her. You can't leave her to tank the boss because she is not strong. This is just a really good summon that you place down almost as you would place a turret somewhere in a game and let that turret just kind of go off on the enemy. This is the exact same thing. I really enjoy using her. I think she's really, really good. The damage is great. Her health is not good, but if you're doing what you're supposed to and allowing yourself to be supported by her and not the other way around, then this summon is going to do great for you and a lot of damage to all the enemies in the game. And guys, before I go, I just want to thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. This was a lot of fun to make. Let me know which summons that I should be using if I missed any in the comments down below. Also, if you want to like the video, subscribe. It would help me out a ton. I would really appreciate it. I've had a ton of fun making Elden Ring content for you, and it all seems to be doing very, very well on the channel. So with that said, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.